The Canon R7 is one of the most popular cameras from Canon because it gives you pro camera quality but at a much lower price, making it the perfect camera for both hobbyists and serious creatives. However, a lot of new cameras have come out lately that might make the Canon R7 outdated. So I tested out the Canon R7 for both photo and video quality, along with other very important features like autofocus, stabilization, low light, and so much more to see is the Canon R7 still worth it or is it outdated? The Canon R7 comes in a fairly small and compact body, making it small enough to travel with and you can easily carry this camera around all day without it feeling like a hassle. And before you guys ask, yes, you can totally vlog with the Canon R7. It's a very light and nimble camera, but you do wanna make sure you have the right lens for it. The Canon RF 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens is decent if you're on a budget, but if you really want the best vlog quality, I recommend picking up the Canon RF 16 millimeter lens. It's a really small and compact lens, and it's also very sharp and I'll also give you guys more lens recommendations later on. One thing that I love about the Canon R7 is the overall button layout and design. It has a separate wheel for shutter, a separate wheel for aperture, and there's also a joystick in the back for autofocus. And now there is a button up on top for ISO, but you can also program your ISO to the focus ring on most RF lenses. And it also has your typical mode dial, but it also has three custom presets on that mode dial. So you can set this camera up for three different shooting environments, like portraits, landscapes, nighttime, whatever you want. And you can also program the four-way directional pad on the back of this camera to bring up other settings like white balance, ISO, color profiles, and you can even make sure that it does different things in photo mode and video mode. With the R7, there's a lot of customization that I think both hobbyists and pro shooters will appreciate. And you can also flip between photo and video mode with one button. Now, this is also the same button that also turns your camera off, and some people have said that they don't like this button because they're worried they're accidentally going to turn this camera off. In the three weeks that I've had this camera, this has never been an issue, it is perfectly fine. And like any modern camera, you also get a side articulating screen for self-recording, but this is also a touch screen that allows you to change any of the settings on your camera. You can go through your menus, change the quick menu settings. You can actually use this camera much like a smartphone if that's what you're accustomed to. And the touch screen also allows you to use touch autofocus just like a smartphone. The biggest point of criticism for the Canon R7 is that when it first launched, there were not enough lenses for this camera. However, over the last year, Canon has really stepped up and they've released some really good lenses for it. In terms of affordable zooms, I really like the 15 to 30 millimeter lens and the 18 to 150 lens. It is a variable aperture lens, but the two lenses are really solid and they get the job done. If you need something with a faster aperture, the 28 millimeter, the 50 millimeter, and the 85 millimeter, along with the 16 millimeter, are really solid options. The Canon RF lenses overall are really solid, even the more affordable ones. In my opinion, some of them look way better than the older Pro line. But what makes the Canon R7 such an incredible camera is the technology inside of it because it delivers really stunning photos and videos. The first thing to know about the Canon R7 is the incredible 32 megapixel APS-C sensor. This is actually one of the highest resolution sensors that you can get for an APS-C camera. And the 32 megapixel sensor has amazing benefits for both photos and videos, but in different ways, and it's way more than just resolution. The Canon R7 is surprisingly good at high ISOs. You can easily shoot this camera as high as 6400 ISO and get very clean results, and even 12800 is very usable with just a little bit of grain. And usually in the past, high resolution sensors are known for being bad in low light, but Canon is definitely changing that narrative. And the Canon R7 also has IBIS in the camera, which is a physical stabilization on the sensor itself. And this is probably the best form of stabilization, but it also has digital stabilization built into the camera. And you can actually combine the two for ultra smooth handheld video or steady photos at a slow shutter speed. The stabilization in the R7 looks really good, but I will say other cameras like the Sony a6700 that cost about the same does have better stabilization. But the number one reason most people love Canon cameras is the color science. Canon is known for having fantastic colors. Everything is saturated, warm, but still the colors are very natural and true to life. And if you really care about your colors, Canon is probably going to give you the best in-camera colors. So how exactly does the 32 megapixel sensor make your photos and videos better? For one, if you're shooting photos, the 32 megapixel sensor is going to give you an incredible amount of detail. You can easily crop in without really any loss of detail. And on top of that, if you're shooting a lot of portraits, by having a high resolution sensor, you're simply able to capture more skin detail, more face detail, and make a more true to life portrait. And the Canon R7 can shoot photos 
fast. It does 15 frames per second in mechanical shutter mode, and on top of that, it also does 30 frames per second, which is as fast as video in electronic shutter mode. And it also has a really large frame buffer, which is how many photos in a row we can take before this camera needs a break. It can do 224 JPEGs or 54 RAW photos at 15 frames per second, or it can do 124 JPEGs or 51 RAW photos at 30 frames per second. And with the 32 megapixel RAW photo files, you can easily take these photos and edit them to your heart's content. You can easily make pro level work with the amount of flexibility you have in this camera. Now, as incredible as the photos from the Canon R7 are, none of it will matter if the autofocus isn't good. And well, it's really good. I'm really impressed by how solid the autofocus is in the new Canon RF line of cameras. It also has subject detect mode for people, animals, and cars. And it does a really good job with face tracking and eye tracking. And just overall, any kind of moving subject is not hard for this camera to track at all. And I'm happy to say the autofocus works just as well in photos as it does in videos, which was not the case in the older Canon cameras. So we might as well talk about video because there are some things about video that might make you feel like this camera is outdated. When the Canon R7 first came out, it was game changing in terms of video. It did two things that no camera at this price point was able to do before. The R7 actually has two separate 4K modes. In regular 4K, it shoots 24, 30, and 60 frames per second. And when the R7 first came out, this was the cheapest camera you could get that did 4K at 60. And 4K 60 is a really important frame rate for serious shooters. You need it for music videos, commercials, any kind of creative work. So this was really nice to see in this camera. And regular 4K mode in the Canon R7 does look really good. You get really nice, crisp, high quality video but there's a second 4K mode that looks even better. In 4K HQ mode, it actually takes the full 7K 32 megapixel image area and downsamples it into 4K. And with that, you actually get 4K video that has the detail and clarity of 7K video. And putting 4K HQ next to regular 4K, you can see there's a huge improvement in detail. The 4K downsampled video is a really useful feature for content creators. If you ever need to crop your video for vertical content, by having 4K super sampled video, it's actually going to help offset that loss of quality when you crop into your video. And the 4K downsampled is also going to have less noise overall because when you take a 7K image, squeeze it down into 4K, the noise and grain in your video actually gets smaller and less noticeable. However, the one tragic flaw in 4K HQ mode is that it's only available in 24 and 30 frames per second. There's no option for 60 frames per second, which is a really important frame rate for serious video shooters. And it doesn't help at all that the Sony a6700 and the Fuji X-C5, the main competitors to the Canon R7, all have 4K downsampled in every frame rate. And the Fuji X-C5 can even do full HD at 240 frames per second. And the a6700 also does 4K at 120 frames per second, although with a 1.5 times crop. If you're a casual user, you probably won't notice the difference, but I did want to mention it for the pros in the audience. But one thing that we can all agree on is that slow motion looks awesome, and the Canon R7 can shoot 120 frames per second in full HD for five times slow motion. And one really important thing to know about the Canon R7 is that in regular video mode, it's only shooting 8-bit color. If you do want 10-bit color, which is a better format of color, you do have to shoot in HDR PQ mode or C-Log3, which is a really nice feature to have, especially for professionals. C-Log3 is going to give you more dynamic range, more flexibility with your colors, and 10-bit color is just simply going to look better when you're heavily color grading your video image. And the Canon R7 is also Canon's cheapest camera with C-Log3 available in it, which is why I think this is such a great entry-level camera for young professionals and content creators. So with everything we know about the Canon R7, is it still a good camera or is it outdated? I don't think the R7 is outdated whatsoever. This is still a great camera to pick up. And if you want to check it out, I'll leave links down below for the best pricing and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.